Sports Night Amplified with Andy Lay on Metro FM. Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. Game over. Sports Night Amplified with Andy Lay. Welcome to it. Touch is back. Here, yeah, the energy is just different when Touch is back. Energy is just on 100, isn't it? But he began it in such a beautiful and special way. Uh, began it all, of course, with uh, speaking about uh, how we replenish and then move forward from there. I love some of the key learnings uh, from the beginning. Because this is where we're finding ourselves in January as we plan for the year ahead. The beginning are some of the key lessons that we got uh, from that show. Thanks so much. He's back again tomorrow between 3 and 6. As I glance at my television right now, I see Steve Compella. Um, he's sitting analyzing matches for the SABC. He's just done a match now, Senegal versus Gambia, alongside Tim Pew at Ludlu. Uh, Tabi Somosia will be coming in this evening again uh, to carry on with this. The SABC so far, we promised you three games. We've been giving you three day, three games a day. We promised you 52 of those games will be live on SABC 1 and 3. We've done it. Hey, what are your thoughts on our broadcast? Brought on, I mean, hey, Greg Atafia, did you see him? Greg Atafia, his analysis was key. My Ngobam is on one of our panelists. Uh, I mean, some great, great panelists that the SABC has gathered up for this. I'm excited. I'm excited. Bafana Bafana is tomorrow night, though. This is when we show off the most. Bafana Bafana is tomorrow evening. I can't wait for that. Do join us. And also, we've got uh, Velile mm-hmm. Mnyandu, mm-hmm. who's out in uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Mm-hmm. And he's not in, 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 in um, Abidjan. He's all the way up in Korogo. Okay. Korogo is by bus but I'm like a bus traffic from Abidjan 9 hours by bus from Abidjan to Korogo where Bafana Bafana are which is on the border of Burkina Faso and Mali yeah 9 hours very Lemnyandu traveled so he can be by Bafana Bafana's side I'm sure like a juluki le man unjani eish so this is the person we're going to be speaking to tomorrow uh, particularly because he's with Bafana Bafana. Mazula Mulefe stayed in Abidjan. Mm-hmm. He's at the games in Abidjan. He was at the games last night. He's seen all the games. So he's, of course, one third of the uh, three wise men. We'll go to him there as well. We're covering you this afternoon. We're giving it to you on SABC Sport, be it on radio or on television. Ridumeti, Vusiwe, Tabiso and myself on television, giving you all of those games. But the big talking point in South Africa is in and around Hugo Bruch. And guys, I want to hear the truth from Hugo Bruce as well. He didn't do that interview here. He didn't speak to me here at the SABC as he normally does about this. The interview that everybody's going on about is uh, one that he did when he was back home. Mm-hmm. That is when supposedly uh, that Hugo Bruce said that, uh, you know, he doesn't get any assistance, doesn't get any help. He wants to meet with the PSL coaches, but there's absolutely no help. And that's when he supposedly said that there's one coach who coaches Mamlodi Sundowns who sees himself as a, a so-called Mourinho. <laughs> but so when I get the opportunity to speak to Hugo Bruce and I will I will then speak to him about that I will ask him about that and I can tell you now very few will get to speak to him before me so we'll have that conversation with Hugo Bruce but we'll take a look at the AFCON results so far there's some matches that you guys wanted to know about the penalty 90th minute penalty that Egypt got you know, I know um, the guy uh, who helps me around the house, Sydney, Ratobela, came in saying, ah, barupile, 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 Egypt no mm-hmm. So we'll get into that. The decisions that have been made at AFCON, uh, the VAR at AFCON, of course, our very own Akona Makalipa uh, manning uh, 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 the VAR, yeah. one of the people that is uh, doing that, or womaning uh, the, the VAR, but also with Abongila Tom, who was on the field yesterday. We saw him refereeing a game there as well. It's 11 after the hour six. There's also Australian Open that's currently underway. I'll give you all the results. Senegal just played a game right now. It's the last game that just came off. They're the first big gun to say we are a big gun Mm -hmm. because Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, yes, they might have won, but not an impressive performance. Mm -hmm. Ghana, Egypt have not put up a good performance at all. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Senegal, they said we're the defending champions. Not only did they score three goals, but three superb goals, two of them coming from the 20-year-old. So we'll get into that and so much more. Let's take a break. We come back on the other side. Hey, it's the weekend that was. But uh, before we begin, of course, let me introduce to you um, everyone that's in the studio. As per usual, on a Monday, it is a three wise men. Not always so wise. Some things, hey, we don't always get right. He's sitting with me now. Yeah, we argue a lot. We don't always agree on the decisions that he, um, you know, he speaks of. I think uh, beginning of the year, we started on that note on the first show already. Victor Kiwani. Are you good the principal? Ah, just like a fish in the water enjoying Afcon. I 
you know, so far, not a lot of games played, only day three, been some solid refereeing. Yeah, and good decisions taken. I was here with SABC yesterday. I watched SABC 3. There was a game. SABC 1, same game. I'm like, ah, indeed, it's life. Everywhere. Life, life. Life. Everywhere you go is life. <laughs> Let's go to the other third um, of this team here. He's all the way in Abidjan. Where exactly are you, Mazon? Sorry, I'm, uh, uh, you, you caught me at the wrong time, Andy. I'm just uh, finishing my tennis biscuits because I can't <laughs> find them anywhere else in Abidjan. <laughs> So are you at the stadium? Are you at the hotel? Where are you? At the moment, I'm at the media center. Uh, obviously, this is where the world media is. If, if you are not traveling to the nearest city to watch uh, another another game, obviously now we just finished watching Senegal, the defending champions against the Gambia. We watched it here at the media center. But so, some of us took a, a long bus drive. I think it's three hours uh, to go to... Um, to, to the city where that, that particular match was playing. But I, I decided to tap this one out. Uh, I'll wait for, for a bus ride that's closer to Kokodi where I'm based. Now, t- tell me about the, the atmosphere. Because, I mean, honestly, Mazola, watching from the television, not very impressive in terms of the turnout of some of these games. We saw people turned out uh, for the Egypt game, uh, the Ghana game as well, had uh, uh, people in the stadium. But even for the opening game with the stadium, there was a 60,000-seater with their own home national team playing Cote d'Ivoire. I think the numbers were just under 40,000 for people that turned out that game. So what is, what, what is the atmosphere in and around Abidjan about football, about this AFCON? Yeah, I think uh, a lot of us uh, are waiting you know, the second round of a press conference with uh, CAF President uh, Patrice Mutipe just to fire these questions at him and the organizers uh, regarding tickets. So the, the story on the ground here is that uh, they are a bit tricky to, 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 to purchase, to get a hold of. I don't know if it's uh, printing issues or um, you know, just, the, just the availability of buying tickets if you decide on the day that you want to go to the stadium. We've even seen the game that I, I was at yesterday, the double header, which started first of all with the Egypt against Mozambique, that 2 2 draw, and then Ghana and, 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 and Capo Verde. You would expect, uh, you know, Egypt with Mohamed Salah, Ghana with their star studded uh, side to attract the bigger crowd. But uh, when the announcer <laughs> communicated uh, the, the, the numbers to us, it was. 11,000 tickets. I almost had to, to, to look at the screen uh, not just once or twice but at least three times to be sure that I was, I was my eyes were not deceiving me and I was hearing it correctly. So uh, we don't quite have the answers yet as to uh, an official word with regard to tickets because if you go around there's uh, uh, orange shit is, is that the color of the elephants? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> orange or whatever color that you, you want to describe that as uh, you know, Cote d'Ivoire fans in the streets, you can see they, they are embracing that they are the host. Um, so it, it, it perhaps it is, is it is not so much of a surprise when it's other national teams that are playing that the stadiums aren't as filled. But I would have expected when Cote d'Ivoire were playing their opening game against uh, against uh, Guinea-Bissau, uh, you would have expected the crowd to have come up uh, in their numbers. So let's see what happens when they uh, play again later in the weekend, and this time, the uh, war will be taking on Nigeria. That's another big picture. I'm planning to go there at the Alasane Otara Stadium, uh, but I wonder, I wonder if the crowd will be better than the 40,000, 41,000 or so that we see in the opening day of the tournament on Saturday night. We're going to pause Mazala there and uh, uh, speak about the business of the day. Of course, the matches that have played so far in the Africa Cup of Nations. If you have missed it, there's been some great matches. There's been um, some great games that we were able to see and be a part of it. Of course, including that opener. Remember that you can catch every single one of those games on SABC Sport, showcasing them on SABC One as well as SABC Two. But before we do that, let's listen to some of the goals. This is the goals in the opener, Cote d'Ivoire versus Guinea-Bissau. Kubanga 
Bola keluar ke bola Tunoto. Second half I get it the coach ada macam gol kau memang bola kat atas every coast try. Tu ke kuanta kina basho. Bamba. Okay kau baik kau bela kan dia tin Jonathan Bamba. Kat mana kan dia tin Mohamed Ima. I very coast. Tahe. Bye bye ile kare Mohamed I very coast. Tu koribua. Guinea-Bissau. Training after the 06, some of the games there. Uh, let me give it to you. It's uh, Côte d'Ivoire versus uh, Guinea-Bissau. 2-0 for Fana with the opener there. What a stunner of a goal. And then, of course, we did see uh, Nigeria drawing Equatorial Guinea. That uh, is one that uh, shocked a lot of people, that one. 1-1 one, one is how that ended. And the later games was Egypt and Mozambique. 2-2 two, two again there. A big shock. Ghana uh, then beaten by Carpe Verde at uh, 2-1. Incredible result for Carpa Verde that day. Yeah, Senegal have just played a game now, beating Gambia by three goals to zero. The next match now is Cameroon that will be taking on Guinea. That is uh, uh, going to be a Group C matchup before this evening. Algeria taking on Angola. Those are the matches that you can look forward to. Speaking of uh, uh, the Africa Cup of Nations, here's a, a little bit of a reaction from Andrea Yu when uh, speaking about why Ghana perhaps uh, lost that match. He just says, we were not good enough. Obviously, we come here, we want to win, but sometimes, you know, you do your best and sometimes it doesn't go your way, but what are you going to do? You need to stand up and, and face, face the reality, and the reality is that the minute uh, we have zero points in the group. Richard Afori of Orlando Pirates. I thought he had a stellar game, uh, but I mean, uh, that second goal, a lot of people saying, hey, could he have done better there? But before that, and there's a big question mark on that as well, because the defender that in front of him that could have obstructed him. But before that, Save the team with some great saves there that Richard Ofori. This is what he had to say after the defeat. That's football for you. Um, sometimes um, um, you don't get what you want in the game. And then um, the game is um, two, two sides. Um, you miss your chances um, and then opponent uh, take his chances. So you just need to focus on the second game because um, now there's nothing we can do in this game again because the game is done. A lot of you praising Admiral Sindove for keeping Mohamed Salah in his pocket, saying, hey, please, release the man now. This is the reaction after the draw against Egypt. Just for the fact that we, we're here after 13 years, uh, it's already a, a pride for, for, for our country, for our people. And we're hoping that they continue supporting us. And I think this, this is, is one of the games that we prove that we can go toe-to-toe with, with any team. But we're hoping to build from here. Are there any big teams anymore in Africa or have the small teams shown up? I mean, we're speaking about the fact that Equatorial Guinea drew Nigeria 1-1. Even worse, Egypt, with Mohamed Salah playing, drew Mozambique 2-2. Ghana, beaten by Carpe Verde 2-1. These are the so-called big teams of the continent. Until Senegal played just now, you know, to to, to kind of uh, offset the balance back again to the superpowers. Incredible that. Absolutely incredible. Uh, SABC Sport is proud to present all the 52 AFCON matches live from the 13th of January to the 11th of February 2024 on SABC1, SABC3, SABC Sport and DTT Channel 4. SABC radio stations will also be carrying the matches. Also available on SABC Plus and SABC Sport.com. SABC Sport is an exclusive official broadcaster of the African Cup of Nations Côte d'Ivoire 2023, bringing you world-class African football. Available to all for the love of the game. Let's switch focus now and go to a little bit of Australian Open. Djokovic showers Dino Prismic, the youngster, with praises after having beaten him. Amazing player. I must say, so mature for his age. Uh, he, he made me really run for my money for sure tonight. That's for sure. Um, and honestly, I, uh, I have many, many praises for him. Uh, just amazing performance uh, for someone that is 18 years old that never had an experience of playing on a big stage. Big kudos to him, to his team. If you've been following uh, the Australian Open, let's have those conversations as well. We'd love to take it up on that um you know, it's 24 after the hour 6 right now, though. Let's find out. What is the ref going to be touching on? VAR has been superb from what I've seen. Mm. The, the, the decisions made have been superb. You know, barring the one 
the Egypt one. But even that, you know, one might say, ah, maybe that is a decision that could have been up for. But it looked like the right decision. What are you going to be talking about? Yeah, uh, thanks. Ma- uh, uh, we'll start with the instructions given to the referees uh, as to what must they cut out in this AFCON. Even now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every tournament has an instruction for referees. Uh, one, um, no, don't tell me. How you'll tell me. This is just a build-up. Okay, okay. You'll tell me. Yeah, we'll tell you about the instructions, and then uh, secondly. So hold on. So uh, CAF has instructed referees. It's referees to yes. say this and this and this. Yes, must be cut out. Must be cut out. Yes. And these are things that we normally see in football. Yes. I can't wait. What else? Yeah. The other one is like you, you remember in the in the Qatar. They were instructed to add more time lost through goal celebration. And th- that's when we started seeing the 8 minutes, 10 yes, minutes, 12 minutes yes, additions. Yes. That was from the World Cup. That was from the instructions, yeah. And then uh, on the game themselves, uh, as they play, we see some interesting decisions. Uh, you mentioned uh, Egypt, Mozambique penalty given there. Uh, we can touch a little bit. But the most interesting one is Ghana versus Cap Verde. Uh, the... 35-minute goal scored by Ghana, which was disallowed for offside. We need to explain to the uh, listeners as to why was it uh, disallowed for offside. Because it was a good goal, brilliant goal. It really was. Uh, Mazala Malefe, what do you have for us? Anything on the ground that we need to be watching out for? No, I think, uh, Andile, you, you, we discussed it a little bit top of the show. I mean, the, the tickets issue is a slight concern, um, given that we've got the best of the best on the African continent. Uh, I mean, if you see, you know, uh, similar competitions in other parts of the country, the stadiums are packed to capacity. So I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's a boiling pot of, su- of some sort that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, but I have also been keeping an eye on uh, movements in South Africa with regards to the transfer market and we can uh, touch a little bit on those. Okay, we're going to be touching on uh, some local transfer markets, some uh, Bafana Bafana news, but also what's happening in Côte d'Ivoire. If you've been watching, you'll notice that the stadiums have been empty, even when the so-called big teams are playing. All of that coming up next. Remember, we're going to be taking your calls on 86 2160 WhatsApp on 60 It's Metro FM. The Three Wise Men, but not always so wise. On Sports Night Amplified with MDLA on Metro FM. Three wise men on a Monday on the mighty Metro FM. One of them is not with us, of course. He's all the way in Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, Mazola, thanks so much for joining us once again. Just for listeners' sake, you know, you didn't make the trip to Koroko, which is um, where Bafana Bafana are based. And we're just explaining to people the kind of place that Bafana Bafana are at and where they are. We saw South African journalists that traveled to Koroko yesterday. They documented the venue, uh, rather the trip. Nine hours on a bus, and I'm not talking about like a, a luxury bus here, you know, the likes of what we no, had here in South Africa, <laughs> Translax, Greyhound, uh, City to City. Yeah. This is this is this is like you know, one of those uh village buses. I'm from the village, and I remember whenever you'd go to town, you know, those big buses <laughs> that load a lot of things on top, people with live. People with live chickens. Lipudi. Lipudi yeah, Those kind of buses. Yeah. No aircon. <laughs> you know, nine hours from I mean, the that, main city. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I arrived on, uh, on, on, on Saturday night. Uh, when I arrived here, the guys were still at the Alessandro Otara Stadium watching um, the hosts Cote d'Ivoire up against Guinea-Bissau. Uh, from there, obviously, because of traffic, they were stuck in traffic for quite a bit. So they... They've had a, a you know quite a quite an introduction to 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 life here uh, in in Cote d'Ivoire because from there uh, coming back obviously due to traffic stuck in traffic for long hours. Um, my conversation with my colleague Veliam Nyandu, uh, the last time I spoke to him uh, on on that on that day was around one one thirty a.m. Uh, local time here, which in South Africa would have been uh, two hours late. Ah, Luna, ne 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 le We were discussing uh, content and strategy uh, because he's the man now who was about to relocate from 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 Abidjan to make his way to Korogo. It began around 11 a.m. from here, the media center. Uh, to try and go find a, a bus that takes them all the way to to Korogo. Initially. Uh, you know, I thought that the guys, the guys had told me it would, it would take them about six, uh, six hours, uh, but with stops and given that the, 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 the bus wasn't a luxury bus, 
it ended up taking them a whooping nine hours wow. before they got to their destination. Yeah. Well, let's get let's get to this content that you speak of. What can you tell us about? Uh, uh, we we're speaking a little bit earlier about life in uh, Cote d'Ivoire for people of Cote d'Ivoire. Is it the prices of the tickets that are expensive? Is it the access to stadiums? What is it that's seeing stadiums for those that are watching so empty? Yeah, at the moment we are still trying to 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 get official word with regards to. Uh, what the what the issue really is, uh, because initially, you know, to to the naked eye, it looked like things are uh, easily accessible. And perhaps if you go to a cap website, or maybe even if you buy at the stadium. Uh, but now that we we've, we've seen what one could, and I'm not being harsh here, uh, you know, given the quality of national teams and players that are here, uh, their t- their attendance so far has 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 been a thorny issue. And I think uh, me and several colleagues have been walking around trying to maybe even ask some locals here and even get a word from Kev uh, with regards to what the real issue is. And as, as soon as we have that, we will try to interview some officials uh, like, you know, our very own uh, Nicolo September here and perhaps even, uh, you know, in the latter stages of the competition, I know we'll probably have another round of uh, uh, questions and, 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 and answers with the president of, of, the, of the federation that is uh, that the Patrice Motsipen will get to uh, to the bottom of it. But let's hope it improves. Uh, we do know that out in Korogo, uh, the numbers look decent when Mamelodi Sundown's ladies team were playing in the uh, CAF Champions League. Uh, perhaps given that there's Namibia, South Africa, Mali uh, and, and Tunisia and just uh, you know about an hour ago in San Pedro, there are a couple of other teams as well there that could be interesting for the fans to watch. But definitely one to to keep an eye out on. All right, so we'll keep an eye out for that as well um, and see if it does improve in any way. Uh, bonsoir, yeah. bonsoir, uh, bonsoir, uh, Monso, uh, uh, Victor, principal. Como ça va? No, I haven't gone that far. Koma <laughs> Safais, <laughs> how are you? Safa In three days. <laughs> I haven't gone that far yet. Sorry. <laughs> Mazola, I, I hear you talking about traffic. Is there no escort? For, for who? Of course, for the national teams and, and the delegates, there are, but uh, not for me, Victor. I, mean, <laughs> I don't have an escort. <laughs> no, no. I'm coming. You get an escort. Don't worry. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Mazola, what else do you have for us? Um. Yeah. Yeah, before I, I, I give you some more uh, content with regards to the AFCON, I think there's also another element that we have to, you know, it's an elephant in the room. Um, and But I'm not sure if it was brought up at the press conference with Hugo Bruce uh, this afternoon. Uh, but Hugo Bruce has given an interview uh, in Belgium uh, with the, in his native country while he was there uh, on holiday uh, before he announced his squad and before he came uh, for the Nations Cup. He has said some wild things, in my opinion. And I've, I've, I've had a look and read uh, the interview. I've had to translate it. Had some friends in Belgium who can who can speak the lingo. Uh, you know, kind of give me uh, the context as well. He 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 is talking about Lyle Foster. How he feels like Lyle Foster had no intentions uh, to actually be part of the squad. I don't know if he's putting a spanner in the works with regards to to reported. Uh, mental health. Of, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think that's anything energy. new, though, Mazola. If you, sorry to, to to interject there, if you listen to the conversation we had um, yeah, no with him, he, you know, he, he yes. sounded like he didn't know what was going on. He sounded, I even asked him at some point, I said to him, Coach, you don't look like you believe this thing. You know, because he's, he's he didn't mince his words about his feelings on that. I mean, yes, he was a lot more diplomatic when he was here in South Africa, but I don't think Hugo Bruce ever looked like he believed the Lyle story. Yeah, well, in that interview with the Belgian newspaper, he was not diplomatic at all. Maha. He says it straight that he he believes in his heart of heart of, heart of hearts um, that uh, Lyle Foster was not keen at all to be part of the Afcon. A little bit later on, uh, when I get to uh, I, I get a bit of breathing time, I will uh, post the extracts on social media because I saw the tweet I posted this morning went a bit a bit <laughs> a bit viral a little bit when people are asking for the link. I'll post a screenshot of the translated version of that interview. He also talks about uh, uh, the relationship between Safa and uh, and the PSL, which, again, nothing new, but this is what caught my attention. He says, 
he he is wondering why he carried on. He should have actually have quit the job. So I'm not too sure, Andy. Maybe this is a man who hmm. wants to continue working for the South African Football Association uh, once the Afcon is done. I don't know if, uh, by the sounds of things, whether he will continue uh, uh, to try and lead us uh, to 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 the World Cup for 2026 when he's talking publicly uh, to a, a local newspaper about how he. he he wishes he should have quit, uh, even though he's uh, now, what, two, two and a half years, going on three years in the job. Uh, he talks about, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 in another interview with the local newspaper, he talks about how Rulani thinks he's Mourinho. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot until it to, to unpack there. We, if, we, if we could, I think, you know, uh, we would even have an entire show about this, and, I, and I'm sure it's something that the podcast Friday guys will dive, we'll dive straight into uh, when it comes to that uh, conversation with Hugo Bruce. But, but Mazola, uh, yes, he's shooting from the hip and he's saying some wild things as our coach, Hugo Bruce, and they're coming out you know, at such an opportune time as well for, for those that want to see the failure of Bafana Bafana. But you got to ask yourself, you got to ask yourself, if even if you're, you're, you're a naysayer to Hugo Bruce, is he wrong in the things that he said? Has he said something that we all go no, high, no, no. Hugo. Yeah. You are wrong here. Yeah. I, I mean, for, for me, it's not a wrong or right uh, uh, debate, Andy. I just think if I am the employee of SADC and I have certain opinions about, uh, you know, uh, my bosses and my colleagues and uh, those in and around the, 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 the association who are partners with the, with, with the company or, 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 or sponsors to the company. You know, some opinion, you, you perhaps, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong here or if you have a different opinion. Uh, you don't share in the, in the public. You don't air out your uh, dirty laundry. You know, there are issues that are, should be kept internally. And I feel like uh, uh, Coach Hugo Bruce has overstepped here in, uh, you know, talking publicly uh, and about some of the things that, in my opinion, I think should, uh, you know, should stay internally. And, you know, he's burning That's why things don't change, Mazola. Employers. That's why things don't change because yeah, the coaches been, before him have never said anything. They never let the cat out the bag. So, therefore, the next coach comes in and leaves and we never know what's going on. Perhaps it's about time that somebody says something in order there for there to be changed. But let's leave that one for now. I think it's going to be a matter of opinion and we'll let you as yeah. a listener decide into which side of the fence you fall in. The podcast Friday, guys, Nadim, I know, is eager to speak about this as well. So, we'll get into it and, 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 and on Friday in proper detail of what Hugo said. And that's going to be on the back of course of Bafana Bafana having played um, tomorrow evening here. What else do you have? We've got time for just one more. We, we did labour on Hugo Bruce. Yeah, yeah, we did a little bit. Uh, let me just give you uh, two. I will combine them. Uh, obviously a story that uh, was breaking news uh, late on, on Friday evening with Mamelodi Sundowns tabling an offer for Lars uh, Bell Bake. Uh, we, you know, they want him on a short term contract. I'm, I'm not too sure if the podcast uh, Friday, the, uh, Friday guys were able to touch on this story, but Amelie Sundowns are looking for a, a striker and they've identified him because obviously the foreign spot is not available. So with Lars having dual citizenship, he can come in on a short-term contract. And the last one being Pulukwane City have paid the money uh, that they owed to uh, Malawian inter international uh, Kuda Mumba. So the FIFA ban has been lifted and this, the club can sign players are moving forward. Mazola, we're going to let you go because I do know that you're sitting in a space uh, with people around you. Thank you so much. People can still catch Mazola on television, of course, uh, through SABC Sport. This man has been clearing his throat all day. He wants to talk. He's like, Andy, I want to talk. Uh, so, Vic, uh, let me see. Do we go now? Yeah, let's just go now. What do you have? Yeah, uh, firstly, my uh, uh, com news coming from AFCON is that the uh, referees have been given instruction uh, to deal decisively with players who disrespect the referees. So any player who disrespect the referee's decision or disrespect the referee will be dealt with accordingly uh, by the loss of the game. The second one is um, attackers challenging the goalkeeper for quick transition. Uh, we know that uh, many goalkeepers now are... You know, are uh, good in transition where goals are scored. We saw Rowan uh, Williams the other day from a penalty area 
uh, to Lipasa, who then scored. So, uh, size transition, uh, Kef has given instructions that we need goals. Therefore, any goalkeeper or any player or any attacking player who challenges the goalkeeper from releasing the ball will be dealt with uh, accordingly. So, those are the two instructions coming from those we have watched uh, Kef matches. So, what, what do we mean when we say people that don't? So, if I go to the referee and I say, but you got that wrong and I remonstrate, decide, dealing with me decisively is what a card. Uh, it's either a card or he wants you with the mouth to stop but that's it. what's been happening anyway yeah but now FIFA has uh, CAF has realized that it's too much so now it has to come to an end because the law says you cannot challenge the referee for his decision so if I say to the referee that wasn't a right decision go look at the VAR and I'm mad and I'm saying no you got that wrong does that count if you if you, you even said go to the VAR a card can even come out you because I told him to go to VAR yeah you're not allowed to tell him I can't referee. tell him you, to go to you're VAR you're not allowed it's not your jurisdiction your job is to play football you can't tell me so in, the, in that game Bulugwane yeah. versus uh, uh, Sundowns that you and I are disagreeing about yeah how, why did Akwana go to the, 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 the assistant referee? He cannot be tell, told by the But player. why did she go? She, she goes there because the law allows her if no, she's not but, sure. They but, communicated. No, but she was sure. She said it's a, it's, a, it's a goal, right? Yeah. Then how did she decide, okay, let me go hear what the assistant is saying? The assistant was telling her that uh, I the saw... The assistant said it was a goal as well. No, no but he said he's not sure about the contact. But, but he, he says so it was challenging. So he, but, he's, but but Riff, yeah. for him, for her to go to the assistant, yeah, she saw what? What said to her? Okay, there might be something here. Let me go to the assistant. The assistant, the referee said, I saw a no, challenge, but I'm not sure about the contact. No. The players remonstrating to her alerted her to there might be something here. Let me go to the assistant, right? No, there was communication between referee and assistant. Okay. As much as the players came, yes. But there was communication. So unfortunately, the assistant said, I'm not sure about the contact. Okay. Hence, the fourth official what came else? and said, there was contact. Okay, then let's go else? to Afcon as well, to Ivory Coast. Uh, we saw um, uh, a, a penalty. You know, Mozambique was losing 2-1. And we were all excited that a Saturday country uh, might get three points from a North African country. Ah, unfortunately, there's a guy called Domingas Makanza who literally kicked a player inside the penalty area and a penalty was awarded. Once When he kicked, I just said, oh, penalty, because I could see that he never got the ball. So a uh, correct decision by the uh, referee, but through the assistant of VAR, because the referee uh, allowed play to continue, only VAR came in to assist. So Makanda de uh, Domingo Seish with this Mozambique, man. Mm. Yeah. Let's they, go to They Ghana. played so well. Ah, they played very well. Dove, they had played so well. You know, I wish I was there because when you referee Mozambique, majority of them speak Shangan. So I was going to tell you, when I was going to tell you, when I was going to tell you, right, let's go to Ghana, Cape Verde. We saw 35 minutes. Uh, 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 Ghana scored a beautiful goal. Ah, what a, what a goal. But then... Uh, what does the law say in terms of offside? There was a player in an offside position who interferes with an opponent who blocked the vision of the goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper could not see the ball because of this player. So the goal was ruled offside after VR intervention. Uh, but I saw it even before VR that uh, this is offside interfering with an opponent because there was a, a, a player who blocked the vision of the goalkeeper. So things are looking good and uh, we also want to congratulate uh, our, uh, Big Jack uh, uh, that's Abungile Tom, Abungile Tom yeah, yeah uh, for doing the Nigeria match. She did very well and represented the country very well. So so far so good for South Africa. What about the three penalty shouts that Ghana had? Mark Haskins re- uh, reminding me here. They had three penalty shouts. They didn't go to VAR. Yes, uh, I will talk about uh, the f- other one. The first one that I saw was. Uh, the ball hit the player's body before it goes to the hand. So it hit the body and then to the hand. And then what does the law says? Any ball that comes from the player's own body, uh, no offense has been committed. Mm-hmm. So that is the other one that I can remember. And then the other one, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, this is the only one. Oh, the other one was uh, Ghana number seven and handball. Uh, this one is, uh, I think it's when the... I can't remember this one, but there was a handball as well. But the most important one that we was clear to everyone was... came from the body. It came from the player's own body. So, no handball. Mark is going to do more research for you. You can call him privately. Thank you so much. <laughs> there are other games, of course, uh, around the world. Real Madrid uh, last night. Real Madrid and Barcelona. 
Jeez, what a game for Madrid. What an absolute night for Madrid. Beating Barcelona by four goals to one um, in the Super Cup final. Great game that. The other one uh, that stuck out for me that we can also speak about uh, was a Manchester United game and Tottenham Hotspur. 2-2 is how that ended. So, take into your calls. Barcelona is really, man. Is really? Ah, is really. Ah, yeah. WhatsApp on 60 Sports Night Amplified with Andile on Metro FM. It's a podcast Friday. I didn't know the details that Lyle Foster had written a letter to Safa asking not to be selected. What do you think, Biso? I think the difficult part is the fact that week in, week out, we're watching him play for Benley. There was also the question of, okay, maybe Afcon is a lot of pressure. Benley is in a relegation battle. Every game they play is high pressure. Nadim Lukele. I honestly think like the Foster doesn't want to play for Afana Afana because you can see him playing. There was a story of Thomas past where he had a problem with Arsenal. They took one of their own medical person, accompanied him, was training with the Ghana national team. So Bernie should have done that? Should have sent the... the if he wanted to, he was going to make an effort. The fact is, like, the Foster doesn't want to play for Afana Afana. He just feel like, okay, going to Afcon. If it was a World Cup, maybe the depression was not going to be there. In he a, needs the care. Of which South Africa can provide that care. The coach was amazed. He received a letter where he said he wants doesn't want to be selected. That's the story here. Mm. A player doesn't want to be selected. 6 to 7 p.m. All right, here we go. Here we go. Call Metro FM now on 0860-002160. Drop us a voice note on 060-552-7303. Uh, good evening, Andy. Uh, we appreciate the entertainment, information, and education on the greatest sports show on radio. Uh, what a G H A N A. What's the pronunciation of that word? Please educate us. Hey, Auntie. I call. But for now, we have run. Ne, 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 ne. Kana. Hmm. It's a big thing. It's. In that time, I am going to fall apart. Go Kana. Straight win. Go there. We lose it. Aksana Nzaba. Nyanbongi sababu fana bema vranti kutinshai kana ah aguni nza. Aski si man. Hey, you can hear the heartbreak in that one. Eh? That yes, man didn't yes. eat last night. Ah, uri shapi le. Next one. Evening, Miss Sandy. Yes, but hey, Sandy from Divan. Yeah, first of all, just like to congratulate Cape Verde Islands for the victory against Ghana. Hmm. Yeah, hey, well done to Mozambique. Yeah, the members day. Play their heart out, yeah. Congratulations to them, uh, despite the controversial penalty that brought to Egypt to the game, yeah. But any hope at the same time, uh, uh, all the best to Bafana. Nothing controversial, yeah, Aye, nothing they get controversial. inspiration from the neighbors, Mozambique, yeah. We nothing controversial, my friend. Kicking an opponent it's in the foul. box, in the box. All right, let's go. I just want to wish Bafana Bafana. As they prepare to take on Mali tomorrow night, we we'll say go, Bafana, Bafana, go. We'll be here. From we'll be here to talk about that tomorrow before I move on to TV to give you that game, and I'll tell you who our panelists are going to be as well. Something exciting. Hi, Andy. Hey. Good evening to you and all the Metro listeners. This is Joy from Watville in Benoni. Yeah, talking about the weekend that was. Mm. Uh, my emphasis is going to be mainly on the Afcon that just kicked off. That's just kicked off now. Mm. Mm, I think the first few games have been more exciting and have caused a bit of an upset. But uh, those teams that have won or have drawn against the so-called big teams should not get carried away because that this is just the beginning. Anything can happen as they go into the into the knockout stages. That's mm. what I can say. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Do you have one more? Please play it. Eh, 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 ma, ah. Hani, dano go pido ro na lesa spene jo ro ira la. Abu, ah, Madrid, Barcelona. Eh, orli ira. Hona le di class ta se spene shika go le le ten zeng le ro na ma, ah. Ne, bara otherwise. Nagara regan tige te. Ya, di semi final. Buki of life. Di semi final ra. Agi tiga final. Mar di semi final ra ya. Bafana 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 style wat lo bunz. As long as dar ga dari sa sandown so fail. As long as dar wat pas sandown so fail. Ari nga kiti di ingwe te. I mean, I looked at that squad, Victor. It's a 
it's most likely you can have six sundowns. He's probably going to have five, six sundowns players in that starting 11. Um, you know, we've got one guaranteed, the captain, of course. Yes. Uh, Tembo's one he enjoys. Yeah. You know, so and I don't want to be taking on creeds to say, hey, this team, that team. Sundowns do have the most players at AFCON. And 11 players at AFCON. Quality. 10 that are with Bafana Bafana mm-hmm. and one Peter Shalulile with Namibia. Yeah. So a huge shout out to, to a team that is obviously doing very well on the African continent. That's yeah. something absolutely amazing. Let's take your calls now and uh, speak all things. If you want to speak about tennis as well, guys, there were some games in the EPL. Uh, there was a cap in Spain. We can't do all of that. Lunga is out in uh, Rua de Port. Uh, Lunga, you want to speak about Hugo Bruch? Hi, uh, good evening, uh, uh, Agent. Hey, good evening, sir. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm full of cool man. He's a pros. I mean, I mean, he kind of he cares, man, because like he's got nothing to lose. I'll always emphasize on that. And then whatever he's talking, he's got he his job to lose. Yeah, I baba. Say chai, look at him and don't cheat. So, and then uh, whatever he talk, he, he talk, he, he, he's talking about or talks about. We need to listen and listen. Very precisely, and then for the first time, with Uma Uma Zola as a journalist, I I learned that he's he's a South African. I beg a good time and no matter that melanga, I put I put he suffer into disrepute. Yeah, disrepute. Yeah, but I learned that. Um, and the other thing, for the uh, the way things are running in Africa, man. Of course, I want to watch the daily pass for nine hours. Yo, and I I pass, boy. I pass. I don't want to say that, but I pass. Thank you very much. Yo. Before you get me into trouble, get out of here. Um, uh, let's go to Akona. Akona is in the East End. Akona. Uh, hello, hello, ma. How are you? No, I'm good, man. Talk to me. Uh, ma, no, I'm, I'm disappointed with this CPC, ma. Mm. Uh, especially when it comes to radio, ma. You only give us one game a day. SABC radio. I'm not talking about TV. Mm. What about people who are in rural areas who doesn't have TV or who only rely on radio? Well, like I mean, I yester- um, yes- Sorry, you okay? Yesterday, yester- yester- my group became is not on radio. I checked all the radio stations. What I'll do, I, I can't speak uh, when I when I when I um, I can't on this one because I am not sure. And I remember you you, you rely on radio as well, don't you? Yes. Yes, my hands, hands on for those because I, I know I've been with you for years and you've been calling in for years. But for those Akwana, that are, are listening now, please do let them know why you rely on radio as much because you're in East London, you're not in the rural areas. Yes, I'm in East London, but the problem is that my, I'm blind, so I only rely on radio. I know when I'm listening to radio, radio will give me the details, you know, of what is happening on the stadium. And I'm a big fan of football, ma. I, I was know this. Really disappointed yesterday that group begins didn't get any game. Akona, I'll follow this up. Um, I, I'm not sure how the radio schedules work because obviously I'm more on television side. But I will follow this up. Akona has been a listener of this show since its inception. Um, he is blind, uh, suffers from blindness, and um, based in East London. So he listens to the radio uh, for all the games and he'll call in the next day and we'll speak about them from what he heard on the radio. So very important to him. But we'll find out more information for you, Akona. Uh, let's go to Smongelin. Smongelin is Matafeni. Every single Monday, Smongelin does not miss this show. Smongelin. Yeah, no, right, man. I've gone. Yeah, from the first day, ma. He called me up to the show. I think it's all about yeah, my aunt, let me start with the Bafana Bafan. Because I'm with him as a South African. Nothing will change now. The coach has selected the team and the boys have gone to AFCON. For us, it's just to support Abafana. Because the Bafana is the Bafana. The Bafana is the Bafana. The Bafana is the Bafana. Because the Bafana is the Bafana. The Bafana is the they go through uh, my social media, buy a bone, which is a car, the sugar corner, Miguelucho, then going to Ama Games, Uzo Banalo, which are Vela Gacum just chamber. But if you pay my game in Laucal, we are born with Apple, and anything can happen. Sponili, Mozambique, Ibamba, each season. One day, my other Tola, he last minute penalty. I think Abafana Xasa, they can get a win Xasa against the man. Let's not uh, shout Abafana Betu. Let's just give them a chance to go to the matches and play their normal game. Then we'll see after that what happens. I appreciate you, Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I completely like agree. Mayor, eh? 
Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I agree with him, yeah. though. You know, support. Uh, Resibe is out in the Gurlain. Resibe. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. And Happy New Year to Tata Vesawane. Happy New Year. Thank you. I've, I've got a question for you. Before I leave, I'll ask you the question. Um, Andile, I'm not sure if you heard uh, what Tom Pokekana said regarding Andre Onana's situation. Um, it's so unfortunate, but I, I, I agree with him because of uh, most people, especially European countries or teams, don't take Africans seriously. At the same time, our African players are also contributing to this disrespect um, so that we are not being taken seriously by the... Well, let's just explain the Andre Onana thing first. Um, he played yesterday against Tottenham for Manchester United, right? Uh, Cameroon are playing tonight. He's going to be oh. playing there. So he flew private jet. We've got the picture. Everybody's seen it. After the, the, the Manchester United match um, yesterday. And uh, it, it wasn't an early kickoff. Huh? Then he flies to Cote d'Ivoire. Mm-hmm. And then he joins the team to play again tonight for his national team. Yeah, Hi. for me special treatment or lack of disrespect in terms of his federation and the tournament as a whole because all the players according to the federation they should be there i think 14 days before the kickoff of the tournament has tend to be corrected yeah, but why did, yes why did he need the special treatment in that regard I, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I think, and I, I'm a Man United fan saying this. I think mm-hmm. what happened with the Andre Onana situation was absolute mm-hmm. treacherous, and especially for for, I, for, for for Cameroon to agree to it because they've had to agree to it because they could have gone to FIFA, they could have gone to CAF, and then to FIFA to say, no, we don't allow him to stay there any longer. But obviously, they came to some sort of understanding, exactly. you know, yeah. and, and yeah, I don't know what to make of it. You want to ask Tatana a question? Go for it quickly. Yes, lovely. Um, tell me, I've realized that especially in the local game and in African tournaments, we are quick to call in the stretcher, whereas in, in Europe, players can just walk out of the, uh, the field and come back without the stretcher. Oh, they only call the stretcher when it is a, a serious injury. Why? Thank you so much. Uh, he'll answer that, receiver. But uh, while you think of the answer, they have to very quickly take Jimmy out in Macau. Uh, have I seen Faith? Oh, there she is. Uh, Jimmy. Yep. No, 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 Oh man. I don't know what to do, Andile. Andile, let me tell you something. Maga is the capital of, of city of South Africa. I think if I look at Maga, South Africa will never become all right, Andile. Yes, Jimmy. I didn't want to Twitter. I do retweet. I'm Jimmy out in Macau. Um, I'm looking at the starting 11 now yeah, for Cameroon. And uh, no, he's not going to be playing that oh, okay. And I, I don't think he could have really, truth yeah. be told. Yeah, uh, Onana really could have not. Uh, been, I don't even think he's part of the team. Actually, I'm going through the team list at the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be a part of the team. I might go quickly uh, just make sure. But nonetheless, doesn't make it any better.